On Monday, the 26th of September 2022, NASA's DART mission will end its 10 month journey and crash into the asteroid Dimorphos. Now, the whole idea with the DART mission is to test whether we could potentially change the course of an asteroid that was potentially hazardous to Earth. Now, thankfully, there is no asteroids that we know of that are a current or a future threat to the Earth. But if we ever did find ourselves in that situation, we'd want to be prepared so that we don't have this mad dash scramble to try and save the planet in a deep impact style situation on our hands. However, it did not destroy the comet. There are now two pieces, one six miles wide, the other a mile and a half. Now, despite what every Hollywood disaster movie would have you believe, you don't need to blow up an asteroid to no longer make it a threat to Earth. All you have to do is nudge it off course slightly, essentially crash a spacecraft into it that will act a little bit like a cue ball in a game of pool or snooker, transferring all of the energy from the spacecraft to the asteroid, usually that are traveling in opposite directions as well. So on like a cue ball, essentially you cancel out some of the asteroid's motion, slowing it down slightly so that as the asteroid is moving, and the Earth is moving, the asteroid gets there just that little bit later and just misses the Earth. So since this impact with Dimorphos is imminent now, here are three things that you need to know about the DART mission. Number one, the asteroid chosen for this mission is not a danger to us and it won't be after the spacecraft impacts either. And the asteroid Dimorphos was specifically chosen for the DART mission because it's not just a lone asteroid. In fact, it's an asteroid moon. It is in orbit around a much larger asteroid known as Didymus. So when the DART spacecraft crashes into Dimorphos, cancelling out just that little bit of energy of Dimorphos, it'll only affect its orbit around Didymus and not send it closer to Earth or put it on a collision course with Earth either. That's also true for the much larger asteroid Didymus, which is currently in orbit around the Sun. Just taking away that little bit of energy from Dimorphos doesn't change the orbit of Didymus. And we know that even though that Didymus is classed as a potentially hazardous asteroid, just because of its proximity to Earth in the orbit it takes around the Sun, we know that it's not going to be on a collision course with Earth for at least the next 100 years and beyond, and it won't be after the DART mission has collided with Dimorphos. The second thing you should know is how we'll know that it worked. Now, DART is set to crash into Dimorphos at 6.6 kilometers a second in the opposite direction that Dimorphos is orbiting Didymus, and so it will cancel out some of its energy and slow it down slightly. Now, what that means is that Dimorphos's orbit will change. It'll actually get closer to Didymus and it won't take as long to do one loop around Didymus. Now, right now it takes Dimorphos 11.9 hours to do one orbit. And we reckon that should change, you know, estimating sort of, you know, the mass of the DART spacecraft and the mass of Dimorphos that we've estimated as well. That should change to 11.8 hours after the impact. That's only a change of about 4.2 minutes in the orbit time, but even just that tiny change would be enough in the energy of an asteroid for something that would ever be potentially hazardous to Earth. Remembering that the Earth moves its entire diameter in its orbit every seven minutes. Now, the launch of the DART mission was timed so that it arrived and impacted with Dimorphos when the Didymus system was closest to Earth that it ever comes. That means that telescopes on the ground that will be observing the system before and after will have a much easier time of detecting both of the asteroids, because if they're closer to us, they'll be larger in the sky and therefore reflect more sunlight and be much brighter. There'll be loads of telescopes on the ground that will monitor both the separation of Didymus and Dimorphos and the time it takes Dimorphos to loop around and complete one orbit before and after the impact. Any changes we see in that orbit time or the separation of Didymus and Dimorphos are going to be key in allowing us to calculate how much energy was actually transferred from the DART spacecraft to Dimorphos and whether it was the same as we predicted to give us a roughly, you know, 4.2 minute change in that orbit time. 
knowing that is going to be crucial to the success of this mission because essentially what we need to know is how much energy can a spacecraft like DART impart to an asteroid and then is that scalable for asteroids of all different sizes or will this method only work up until a certain mass or size of asteroid? As well as all of these ground observations, there's also a tiny cube satellite developed by the Italian Space Agency that will separate from DART 10 days before impact, and then it will record images of the actual impact itself, plus the resulting ejector that will get thrown out from the crater that's left behind as well, so we have a better idea of how the impact actually occurred and how it affected the asteroid. There's also a European Space Agency mission called HERA set to launch in 2024 and head back to Didymus to investigate the aftermath in more detail. Because it could be that the impact throws up a load of dust from the surface of Dimorphos. Dust that then blocks light, i.e. it blocks sunlight from getting to the surface of the asteroid and reflecting off it so that we can detect it with our telescopes. It would make the asteroids much fainter to us here on Earth so that we couldn't perhaps actually see the position of Dimorphos very well or with great accuracy and therefore couldn't determine the separation or even the orbit time of Dimorphos with very good accuracy either. If that's the case, then sending obviously Hera back to investigate this system in a couple of years time is going to be crucial for actually determining what impact did we have with this actual impact over the DART spacecraft. And finally, if this works, how quickly could we get a mission like this off the ground if we found an asteroid that was a danger to us? Now, if we ever did spot an asteroid or a comet that was a threat to Earth, we don't really know how much time we'd have sort of in warning to prepare something because it all depends on the mass or the size of the asteroid and also the angle of travel compared to the angle that the Earth is traveling at around the sun. So a much bigger asteroid, for example, would be much brighter in the sky. It would be much more obvious. We'd have a much better chance of spotting it and knowing what orbit it has and predicting if in, you know, X number of years or that's, you know, 100 years time or so, whether in that time period it would ever be a threat to Earth. And we could have decades of warning. But if you have something like a comet, which are much rarer because they come from the very far reaches of the solar system, but on very direct orbits at steep angles to Earth. So you don't start to spot those until they get much closer, so you'd have less time. So you could have a scenario where you'd have decades of warning, or you could have a scenario where you only have a few months of warning, like in the recent film, Don't Look Up. So having a project like the DART mission, which is tried and tested that we hopefully know works, we should know that soon, you know, that we can literally just unbox and launch is a great idea. But still, you will have some time constraints on how quickly you can do that. So we can look at the development of the DART mission as an idea for how long it would take to relaunch something like this. So of course, it was decades of planning and design and redesign for the DART mission, but we can assume obviously that's all been done now. So let's just focus on sort of the um, building and then testing of the DART mission before it launched. So the DART mission passed its final critical design review in November of 2019, meaning that it could move to its fabrication and assembly stages where it was actually being built. And then by May 2020, it was finally ready after, you know, a couple of delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic to move from assembly into its final sort of testing and install stages. That stage took over a year or so with the spacecraft finally ready for launch by October 2021. It was eventually launched in the launch window of November 2021. So let's say on the first go with the DART mission, it took six months for all the fabrication and assembly, which was pretty quick because this is a fairly simple spacecraft. All you need it to do is slam into the asteroid, essentially, which means it's also pretty cheap as well. And then you've got 15 months for all of the integration and testing that's done on it. Now, obviously, that's the first time that we've ever done that. So everything's going to be slower because you're sort of problem solving as you go as well. But then obviously, the stuff was delayed and made more difficult by the pandemic as well. So I imagine those timescales could be shortened if we were ever to try and, you know, do this again by literally throwing more money at it and more people at it. So let's guesstimate, let's be conservative and say that we could maybe half those timescales. So three months for the assembly and, and then say like seven months or so, seven and a half months for the integration and the testing that means that it's ready for launch. 
So that quick back of the envelope calculation suggests that we could have a clone of the DART mission ready to go in just under a year or so after the discovery of a potentially hazardous asteroid. That could probably reduce even further if, you know, we decide to fund uh, the manufacture of a clone DART mission that would be, you know, in the box and ready to go in case of emergencies. And perhaps we would do that if the DART mission is successful when it crashes into Dimorphos very soon. So I don't know about anybody else, but the fact that the DART mission is close to impact with Dimorphos on Monday the 26th of September 2022, and that we'll finally be able to test if this method of planetary defence actually works, really helps me sleep better at night. Now, you can watch the live coverage of the impact from NASA's ground control on NASA's social media platforms. I'll pop a link in the video description down below to NASA TV's YouTube channel where you can watch it. The coverage from NASA will start at 6 p.m. Eastern US time on that Monday with the impact schedule for 7.14 p.m. Eastern US time. I'm actually going to be on a holiday then, so there's going to be nothing on my YouTube or other social media channels until I get back from my break in October. But it will take time for us to determine if the DART mission was a success with the combination of the Lycia Cube observations, the ground-based telescope observations, and then also uh, the European Space Agency's HERA mission as well when it arrives in a couple of years' time. So I'm going to be talking about the DART mission for a long time to come yet on this channel, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those updates. Until then though, everybody, happy stargazing. Before we get to the bloopers, a huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this week's video. Brilliant is a STEM learning platform with interactive courses to help you learn maths, science, and computer science. They have thousands of lessons with new exclusive content added every single month. And learning by doing like this is personally the way I learn best. And it's amazing how much of an impact learning just that little bit each day can have. Now I get approached by budding astrophysicists and scientists every single day who say that they're worried that maybe their math skills aren't up to scratch. And my advice is always just to practice, practice, practice until it becomes second nature to you. Now Brilliant is a great place to stretch your maths muscles with courses like their mathematical fundamentals that get you to practice your algebra and your number theory and also generally get you applying problem solving techniques that are useful for all areas of science and the working world. So if that sounds like something you'd be up for, head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky, or you can click on the link in the video description below and sign up completely for free. Plus the first 200 people that go to that link are going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thank you so much to Brilliant again for sponsoring this video. And now we're all those bloopers. So the whole idea with the DART mission is to test whether we could change the course of a potentially hazarded, hazarded, first sentence. <laughs> So there's going to be many telescopes in the ground that are going to monitor not only that orbit time that Dimorphos takes, but also the separation. The separation. <laughs> Sean, leave me alone. It's dark. It's going to crash into a rock. It's got the cube. It's got the cube. <laughs> It's gonna image this whole beautiful thing. <laughs> I can't get the corn song out of my head. 